I fully believe in the concept of being innocent until proven guilty. But when it comes to this Diddy situation, it's such a unique situation because we, the general public, we decided that Diddy was guilty of all of this stuff long, long ago. And it seems like we've just been kind of waiting for the law to catch up for all of these years. You know, it seemed as if he was untouchable and he would be able to do whatever Diddy wanted to do. But long before we even knew a little rod existed, long before anyone heard of a young Miami, we all had heard rumblings about Diddy's parties and about the weird things that go on at Diddy's house. We've looked at the random videos of him with like Justin Bieber and Usher and others, and they gave us these uneasy feelings. So even though I fully support the concept of being innocent until proven guilty, in some situations, it's like, you know, the law catches up kind of late and by then it's already too late. You know, as far as the general public is concerned, Diddy is guilty. But by now, you've heard the allegations. By now, you know of the lawsuits. But make no mistake about it. Even when it seems like this news story may have gone away or it's not in the forefront, the wheels are still turning. And it seems as if there's another nail being added to Diddy's coffin every single day. And now, Little Rod, the man who is suing Diddy, has come forward with some new claims. Because, you know, we've been sitting here, like I said, we know about the allegations. We know about the lawsuit. We know there's an investigation going on. But we don't know what type of evidence they have against Diddy. We know what he's accused of, but what, what, what evidence... Do these people have right now? Well, Little Rod, one of the men suing Diddy, is claiming that he has hundreds. Yes, you heard that right. He is claiming that he has hundreds of hours of audio. Hundreds of hours of audio recordings of Diddy admitting to crimes, bragging about crimes, admitting to blackmailing people, paying people off, and you name it. So basically, it appears like Little Rod, throughout the duration of him working alongside Diddy, he basically kept like a tape recorder going the whole entire time. Now, of course, when you wind up in a case like this, it's like, oh man, those recordings may be instrumental in proving your claims and taking Diddy down. But at the same time, in my opinion, it kind of shows that someone already had the intentions of trying to make a case when they got into said situation. It seems as if once you started working with Diddy, you automatically started having the tape recorders rolling. So eventually you could find something to take them down with. You know what I mean? And I don't think that's necessarily a good look. Even if Diddy is on these recordings admitting to all of his crimes and admitting to this, admitting to that, you can look at it as a good thing because it can be used to take Diddy down, I guess, right? But at the same time, it shows that the person's intentions were kind of to get into the situation purposely so you can find a way to sue or something along those lines. But let's go ahead and dive into this article and find out what's going on here. Rodney Little Rod Jones Jr. has made wild, more wild claims against Sean Diddy Combs in a sworn declaration to the court. <clears throat> Jones, once an insider in the world of the Bad Boy Records mogul, has recently offered the court a recording purportedly of Combs bragging about engaging in violent and illegal activities throughout his storied career. Jones, a producer who collaborated with Combs on the Love album, Off the Grid, claims to have first-hand knowledge and evidence of Combs' illicit actions, including physical assault, tax evasion, and, more disturbingly, 
the shooting of a woman. He shared how he would get things by force, Little Rod explained. This included record deals, signatures on contracts, sex acts from women and men, as well as the women of his enemies. Jones alleges that Combs boasts on the recording a wide variety of criminal activities, from coercing individuals into record deals and sexual acts to physically assaulting industry executives and evading taxes through offshore accounts. Among the startling accusations Jones makes in his $30 million lawsuit against Combs, he asserts that he took pleasure in recounting his influence over celebrities and artists, particularly in manipulating circumstances to his favor. Jones also has recounts Combs admitting to involving Jennifer Lopez in potentially illegal activities, lever leveraging his position to have Shine take the fall for a nightclub shooting in return for a record deal with Arista Records courtesy of L.A. Reid. He bragged about departed attorney Johnny Cochran's savvy legal skills and ability to pay off the witnesses through private investigators and other third parties, Jones explained. Jones also claims that Combs still reveled in aggressively handling record executive Steve Stout over a business dispute over Nas' Hate Me Now video. The assault left Stout with a broken jaw and arm. Mr. Combs bragged about the power he has and the fact that he beat up record executive Steve Stout, Jones told the court. He laughed uncontrollably as he talked about busting him in the head with a bottle of champagne in a chair. On another occasion, Mr. Combs bragged about beating up Gerald Reitschneitzer outside of a nightclub in Hollywood. The lawsuit paints a picture of a man with considerable sway over the industry's legal and financial machinations and claims Combs maintained control through investments in shell companies and the strategic movement of money to untraceable accounts overseas. Mr. Combs has also informed me that only poor people pay taxes, Jones claimed. He shared that it is a common practice in the music industry to wire money from anonymous accounts overseas. This way, if there is ever a need to take care of a problem, it would never be tracked back to him. These accounts were in Germany. Combs has already dismissed Jones' lawsuit as pure fiction through his lawyer, Sean Hawley, who slammed Jones and his lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn, for launching a lawsuit that was nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. Well, if it really was an attempt to garner headlines, then I feel like we should find out. Because if this man is claiming that he has hundreds of hours of recordings on Diddy, then he should be able to um, produce those recordings. You can't go in court and be like, yeah, I got all of this. And then, you know, you never show it. So I think that if what this guy is saying is true, he should have the evidence and that should be brought out, right? But, you know, we live in a weird time, people. And this is something I've been talking about for a while now. We live in the day and age of AI. Back in the day, having some video evidence or maybe some recordings, that that would be really solid. You know what I mean? You, you, you call someone or you're able to record someone admitting to a crime. That's solid, right? But in today's day and age, how solid is it? When I, from the comfort of my own home, can produce a fake recording of you saying whatever in the hell in the world you're saying through AI. You know what I mean? So going forward, people I don't know how a lot of these cases are going to be handled going forward. Let's just say that. Because even if you're able to sow like one single seed of doubt in one juror's mind, that's all you need. And moving forward, any jury that properly understands AI is not going to be able to listen to a recording and, to, and really make a judgment off of that, right? Like a true and honest judgment in today's day and age. 
I'm sure you'll find jury members that don't understand AI. You'll put the audio in front of them, they'll listen to it, and they'll just take it as gospel. But someone like me, someone like some of you in the audience, we understand how powerful AI is now. And all, all you got to do is take like 15 seconds of someone's voice and you can produce whatever the hell you want. You can have people saying whatever you want. Now, that doesn't mean that this guy made fake audio recordings of Diddy. But if Diddy's lawyers are able to form that, that little bit of doubt in jurors' minds that maybe... These audio recordings can't be used against him. You know what I mean? And that goes for any case out there, not just the Diddy case, but you get what I'm saying. You know, in this in this day and age, you know, back in the day, a few years ago, audio recordings, oh, damn, you got them now. But now it's like, how seriously will these audio recordings be taken? And how can we really use them as solid evidence when we know that these things can be tampered with and manipulated. And even if you have some type of process to determine that, okay, this is 100% genuine, lawyers on the opposite side can always argue that it's not. And once you, you know, form that doubt, that's all you really need. But for now, let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. While you're down there, make sure you hit that thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you would like to donate, you can donate via Cash App, or super thanks. But with that being said, I'll talk to you all very, very soon in the next one.